Hi, Mr. Morris. This is Miss Fry. Can you hear me? Hey. Yes, I hear I, you. How you doing, Miss Fry? I'm okay. So I'm using my phone so that I can talk when you need me to, and I'm on a computer. Got you. Okay. Now All I right. know. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Do you want us to introduce ourselves now or later? Uh, in, in a few moments when we get started. Okay, thank you. I'm just trying to give everybody a few more minutes before we before we start. About another about another three minutes. Uh, user two, who are you? User two. I see someone listed here as user two. Can you identify yourself? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, who is this? Oh. I'm Marie. I'm a local, a long-time local resident. I live on Bailey Avenue. Pleasure, Marie. Thanks for joining us tonight. Thank you. You're welcome. I'll I'll mute myself again. Okay. okay. All right. All right, well, we want to get started. If you don't want to belabor the time, I want to thank each and every one of you for joining us on tonight. Um, it has been a long, long and arduous season, um, but thankfully we have made it to this point. Uh, we've had some losses. Uh, we've had some victories during this time of pandemic and, and sickness, um, but yet uh, for a reason, but we are yet here. We have survived to this point, and it is good to see you all to be a part of this community board um, once again. I'm looking through the list. I know that um, we haven't, we don't have um, many of our board members uh, here with us tonight. I do see uh, Margaret um, back with us again. Good to see you, Margaret. Um, welcome back. Um, we are looking for our other uh, committee members to come on uh, so that we can have a, a quorum. Um, but if not, we will still move on with our meeting. Um, just by a, a short way of address, I'm going I'm to do this um, prior to our member roll call. Um, but I just want to thank all of you uh, for taking the time out of your schedule uh, once again for coming on with us. Uh, on tonight, there are some issues uh, that we, there are some issues that we want to um, address briefly uh, on tonight. This is just simply um, uh, more of a regathering uh, type of meeting. 
uh, just to get reacquainted with one another. Um, if there's any other issues that we need to address moving forward throughout the year, we want to try to bring those to the table um, as well. Uh, we want to hear from those um, that are, of course, on the board and in the community uh, that may have some issue um, that we can address uh, or direct to the proper people. Uh, so we just want to make sure that, you know, we get back to the group of things. I know it's been a long time uh, since we have been together and that we've had an opportunity to speak. Um, so we definitely want for you all to have that chance on tonight. Uh, once again, I'd like to thank uh, Chair Lady Spalter, um, of course, uh, Borough President. Uh, we, we want to just thank them for once again, allowing me to have uh, this seat as chairperson uh, of Community Board 8. And we look forward to another uh, fruitful year representing the people of the Community Board. So at this time, uh, we're going to have a, a quick roll call. Um, as I said before, I do have Margaret Della here. Um, is Robert Kaplan here? Uh, no Robert Kaplan. Um, do I have uh, Tracy Pardo here? Um, I believe. Um, I just let in Julie Reyes, or was that Jill Towns? Uh, Julie, you here? Julie Reyes, I think I see your, your okay, name there. here. I, I was trying to unmute. Yes, hi, how gotcha. are you? Okay. How are you? Welcome back. Good to see you again. Thank you, you too. And lastly, Jill Towns, are you with us tonight? All right, uh, we, we're still looking for uh, a few more of our members to join us on this evening. Uh, but like I said, tonight, I don't want to belabor the time. Um, I want us to, want, like I said, get reacquainted uh, with one another um, to address any issues that we may have um, to speak of going forward you know, so that we can have another productive year uh, on the housing committee. Um, once again, I'd like to say thank you to the committee members um, that have returned uh, to you, Margaret, or to you, Julie. I, I know that you guys' schedules um, are always busy, um, but you take the time out uh, to come to these meetings and be a part of this committee and serve the people of Community Board 8, and I don't take that lightly. So I just wanna say thank you to, to each of you and look forward uh, to working together again uh, for the, this year of 2021-2022. Um, uh, for the members that are here, um, Margaret, uh, you, signed, you signed in first. So if you like, you can just take a few moments to just, uh, if you have anything that you would like to say, uh, you can come on and, and share with us for a quick moment. And I'll, I'll open the floor to you. Sure. Uh, thank you, Ted. Um, and I just wanted to say thank you so much for your leadership. You've done an incredible job with this committee. And, you know, I think you always bring so many uh, relevant speakers and get things done and raise a number of issues, you know, that are really important to people's just day to day lives and their quality of life. So um, thank you so much for um, your leadership and, and bringing me along with you. Um, I'm, I'm Margaret Della. This is, I think, my third year on the community board. Um, I, uh, I've served on a couple of different committees, but I just love this committee so much that I <laughs> wanted to stay on it and learn much more uh, about housing issues uh, in the district. And uh, I live in Riverdale. I work in Kingsbridge Heights. I work at Kingsbridge Heights Community Center. Um, and I'm, I'm just glad to be back. So thank you, Ted. Thank you so much. And of course, you know, you, you guys make me better. I appreciate your remarks, but it's really, really, especially was last season, it was really you guys that worked with me, you know, the situation that I came into in the middle of the season. Um, but yet you guys, you know, you, you picked me up and, you know, you, you, you helped me along and I, and I definitely appreciate that, you know, um, I, I don't take that lightly because it was a, a big undertaking. You know, but we definitely appreciate uh, the previous leadership of the community board because uh, he was also instrumental in allowing me to be in this place. 
you know, so I, I'm definitely appreciative of Darius and all the work that he did um, through his tenure uh, with the community board. Um, Julie, would you like to say something? Hi, um, I just like to echo what Margaret said. I think you're doing a terrific as, as chair and I appreciate it. And um, any assistance I can do, I'd be glad to give a hand. And it's good to see some past committee members. I think Lee, haven't seen you in ages. <laughs> um, but thanks for all you, you do and we're here to help to, to move things along. Thank you, thank you so much. Um, also, I, I, sh I should have done uh, what Margaret, this is what I'm talking about, you guys, you're still helping me. Um, I, of course, I am uh, the chairman of the community board. My name is Theodore Morris. Um, I am uh, a resident of Marble Hill. Uh, I've been here since 1984. So I've, I've been in the neighborhood for quite some time. Um, I've seen a lot of changes, um, not all for the bad. Uh, and some not for the good, but we, we're yet uh, within the community still struggling and still fighting to make sure that the people of Community Board 8 are represented well. Um, the, the, the men and women that you, um, that you see tonight and that you will see going forward within our meetings, uh, they spend a lot of hours working on the behalf of uh, the community. And we just want to continue to appreciate them and for the work that they do and what they bring to the table. Um, so on tonight, like I said, I don't want to continue to hold up um, our time. Uh, so as members come in, uh, we will acknowledge them and move forward. Uh, we do have um, special guests with us on tonight. Um, Tony Edwards had called me a little bit earlier. He is actually at another rally uh, speaking there. He said, if he could join us, he will. Um, but we wanted to thank him for his willingness and his work that he has done with Community Board 8 uh, throughout the last season. Uh, he is the, uh, the president of the Tennis Association uh, at Marble Hill. Uh, we also have uh, the, ma the housing manager of Marble Hill with us on tonight, Miss Paula Fry. And I want to thank her as well. Um, she has kept this board in the loop uh, with various things going on within Marble Hill. Um, she takes our criticisms and she takes our our words and she applies them the best as she can um, in, in the auspices of her office. So we definitely appreciate her and the work that she uh, has done and continues to do uh, for the residents of Marble Hill and along with uh, Community Board 8. Um, if she likes, um, I'd like to open up the floor to her to have a few words uh, and address us. Ms. Fry? Yes, hi, good evening, everybody. So I really enjoy working with the Marble Hill um, residents. Um, some things that's up and coming, they are beginning to do work on the new boilers. I think that should be finished in 2024. Um, recently, uh, we got new containers for residents to dump their trash in. Hopefully this will work as far as the rodents go. We've put them in three areas by building 10 building three and building two. Um, what else is new? I'm just slipping my mind right now. Um, so we got that going. So hopefully that worked. We still have not pest control of them to come out and, you know, address the issues with the rodents. Okay. Um, oh, that's what the tree, they did, not the tree, the garden. They did put up the solar panels. So I believe the time for them to set to go off is at 7 p.m. Um, I haven't, I did, was there Friday. I didn't see it lit up, but somebody did tell me they've seen it lit up. So I'm very excited about that in the garden. Um, so far, that's it. Good, 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 good. Um, the, the garden where the solar panels uh, were installed, where is that located? It's in between building nine and eight. Okay. I think that's, I can't remember, is that the West Garden? But it is a pleasure working with Ms. Fisher. Good, I'm glad. I'm glad that things are, are working out. Um, as you can hear, um, one of the major things that we had addressed and petitioned the city for 
uh, in regards to the boiler situation uh, at Marble Hill. So it's good to hear um, that work is being done uh, to replace those boilers uh, within Marble Hill, um, because we know that during the certain parts of the season in the winter, um, there have been times where we have gone uh, without heat and without hot water. So hopefully um, once this work is completed uh, by 2024, that this uh, can be more of a consistent um, situation with for the residents. Um, also, um, Ms. Fry, I believe there was, oh goodness, there was still a portion of one of the buildings, I, I, I can't remember, I have to look back at my notes, that was, that was dealing with a gas situation. Um, was, is that still the situation or uh, was that no, rectified? That was, building, that was building nine and it has been rectified. Okay, good. So, so all the residents now have, have full gas capacity uh, in the home. Correct. Thank you so much. Now, um, also, I think um, Mr. Edwards has come into, um, into the room. So I'd like to give him a moment, um, if, he would, if he would choose to, to uh, uh, give us a, a, an address. And if anything that he would like to, uh, to state or, or bring up, um, this would be the opportunity for him to do so. Tony? I don't know if he uh, has a way to unmute. Can you hear us, Tony? Okay, we um, we'll give him a few moments, and um, we'll we'll circle back with him. But uh, once again, we want to thank uh, Mr. Edwards for all of his uh, various initiatives. Uh, that he worked on throughout the last season um, with the community board, um, very instrumental in having certain things implemented and done, um, especially when it came down to the COVID epidemic, um, how Marble Hill, um, along with Ms. Fry, um, they allowed us to use the, the uh, community center uh, as a, a COVID-19 uh, location for people to get their shots. Uh, so we want to thank them and, of course, the members of SOMOS, uh, the doctors and nurses that were there uh, to administer the shots um, for those, uh, those couple of days that they were there. Because um, most certainly um, they were able, I believe, uh, to save some of the lives of the people in the Marble Hill Riverdale area um, by administering those shots. Uh, so we want to thank, once again, Mr. Edwards and Ms. Fry uh, for allowing that to happen, um, as well as the members of the 50th Precinct who also uh, came through uh, our neighborhood NCOs uh, that made sure that the people were safe uh, as they came and went, uh, along with Captain Melendez. Um, Tony, I don't know if you're there or not, um, but whenever you, you're able to unmute yourself, just break in and um, we'll give you a chance to, to share a few words with us. Um, one of the things that I would like to, to talk about uh, briefly right now um, there are some initiatives that are happening uh, here in the city, um, but one of the major issues for our area is the homeless shelter that is being proposed uh, at 6661 Broadway. Um, and that is proposed to open up, uh, I believe in the fall of 2023. Uh, this is a DSS, DHS effort um, to open up uh, a homeless shelter that will house 130 uh, homeless males. Um, we know that, um, well, let, let me start by saying, of course, this is a housing committee. Uh, we are in no shape, way, shape or form against housing uh, the homeless, uh, but we would indeed ask that whenever um, housing for the homeless uh, is being considered that uh, these considerations are being made fairly across the board and that um, services be available to these men um, that come into the neighborhood uh, because one of the, some of the major issues that we have um, are with safety and security concerns um, for the neighborhood uh, because if you're not familiar, 
whenever you do have these um, shelters move in particular areas, uh, crime rates do increase. Um, there are some issues uh, that come along with these locations um, and, and these buildings um, that we have to make sure that are addressed uh, because we, we don't want the community uh, to feel unsafe. Uh, we don't want the, the, their, the lifestyle of the community to be changed um, with these shelters being open. Uh, so we want to make sure that everyone is safe, especially those that are inside the shelter. Um, because as we know, some of these shelters uh, are not the most pleasant of places. And when you're housing men um, in small spaces, um, things happen. So we want to make sure that they are safe as well. Um, we want to make sure that if um, these shelters or this shelter, the proposed shelter is open, that uh, they do have access to the rudimentary things. We want to make sure that they have access to resources like food, transportation, and of course, jobs. Uh, me personally, um, I work for a not-for-profit organization where uh, I am a job developer and we offer services to men and women that are recently and formerly incarcerated. So I know that if we offer this service, there are other organizations that offer these services to the homeless. So we want to make sure that they be led to these services um, when the time comes. Uh, we also um, understand that with this shelter, there is a proposed 10 p.m. curfew um, with 24 hour security. So we also want to make sure that that is adhered to and that on the street, uh, there is no disruption uh, in front of uh, the shelter. Uh, so um, with this community board, along with the members, we want to make sure that Senator uh, Alexandra Biagi, uh, Representative, Representative Jamal Bowman, uh, Councilman Eric Dinowitz and Assembly Jeff Dinowitz um, are all aware of our concerns and that our concerns be addressed um, throughout the time um, prior to this um, shelter being opened. Uh, so that's one of the things that uh, we really want to uh, remain heavy on uh, throughout this upcoming season uh, with the community board, uh, that the considerations and the concerns that we have are actually listened to um, and that the community be heard. Um, so I want to just um, put that in you guys' ear and like I said, I don't want to have a whole lot to say tonight because this is our initial meeting, um, but I do want to make sure that this is one of our major efforts um, for the season. Um, if Margaret or Julie uh, would like to, to say something in regards to this matter, um, please feel free um, to, to chime in and have something to say. Uh, because like I said, this is, a, this is not just a, a me effort, but it's, it's about us, it's about a team. And uh, we all work together um, in regards to these initiatives and the community board. So Margaret or, or Julie, if you'd like to say something, please, um, please come on in. Ted, I think you framed it really well. Um, you know, I do want to encourage the community board and its members um, to have a conversation about what this all means. And, uh, what you just stated raises a number of questions, right? Those are all the questions that we have or captured many of the big pieces. Um, and so I, I do want uh, the community board to engage in a thorough conversation before, you know, different committees and, and members start placing their decision on what's to happen. I do think it's a worthwhile effort to discuss it thoroughly. Thank you, Margaret. Um, Julie, if, would you like to share anything? Before we move on, uh, I think you sort of hit on the point. I, I just also like to mention that any presentations that they have made to the board or any other committees, that we should be able to review copies of it. We could just ask the board if we can take a look at the Zoom. Got you. Okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll definitely make sure that um, that these things happen. Because um, it, it is important, you know, even if we don't live uh, in the exact proximity, um, it yet is, it affects the, the board overall, because these, these people that are around the area are still part of our constituency, and we want to make sure um, that they feel safe. 
um, you know, we, we may not be able to, to stop the shelter from being open, because like I said, we are in no way, shape or form against housing the homeless, uh, but we want to make sure that everything is done correctly and that the community um, is prepared and that uh, when they do move into the neighborhood, um, that the, those men uh, that will be there will have access to certain services um, so that we won't have a lot of these issues that follow so many of these um, shelters. Uh, Mr. Morris, may I ask a question? This is Ms. Yes, Fry. What, yes, was the address, what was the address again? The address is 6661 Broadway. Um, that's at okay. 262nd Street and Broadway. Okay. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Morris, may I ask yeah. a question? Isn't that where there was that hit and run the other night? I believe it wasn't too far from there. I, I can <laughs> check with our um, with the public safety and see if that was where, but I, I believe it, it was about a, maybe about a block away from there. Yeah. So. So yes, you it's know, what, dangerous they, they, there now. I think the person that was killed may have been a homeless person because they found no identification on him as of yet. They don't know wow. who it is. Okay, um, what, I, what I will do is um, speak to, um, I believe Captain Melendez, I have to see there were some changes that were made at the 50th, but I think Captain Melendez is still there. Um, if not, definitely address um, our public safety um, chairman and see exactly if we can get any more details. Uh, so possibly by our next meeting, uh, we can have some more details with that, or you can join us um, with the public safety um, meeting uh, for next month. Thank you. No problem, Sean. Thank you so much for that question. Uh, anyone else while, while, while we're on this subject? Can you hear me? Hey, Tony. <laughs> Welcome aboard, man. We appreciate yeah. you, man. I, I don't know if you if you heard me earlier, you know, but I, I want to just say thank you for all your work that you've done with us uh, throughout the previous season, you know, and the diff different initiatives uh, you were able to get off the ground and you included the community board in. Uh, so we definitely want to say thank you and we look forward uh, to this next season. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Please excuse me for being tardy, but I got caught up in another meeting uh, that's just as important as this. It's all about the community. And that's why I'm here to serve the community and try to make things better for all around. Um, I think you wanted me to chime in as far as different things that uh, that's ongoing. Um, yes. Currently, uh, I was in a meeting earlier today. This has to do with the heating. And uh, I'm still working on more details. It was a brief meeting. And I don't think it will be fair to Ms. Fry for me to um, air so much about actually speaking with her first and foremost. And so I would like to hold off on that. Only thing I would like to say is that there's going to be an improvement in the heating situation, heating and hot water situation here in Marble Hill. Um, primarily what the, the goal is, is to separate the systems where you have one system just for heating alone and another system for hot water. All right. And so um, the contractors in the process of making that divide um, I can say this much that buildings, the first buildings that they're looking at are buildings number seven and number nine. Number seven is, let me see, 5480, yeah, 5480 Broadway, if I'm not mistaken, and number nine is 5240 Broadway. All right, so those are the first two buildings that are going to go through the transformation. But again, I need to update Ms. Fry first before I share anything further. And come next month, I'll be better prepared to uh, make more of an announcement. All right. The okay. other thing that's going on is on November 12th, um, I'm going to co-host uh, a small award ceremony because what Knights with the Housing Authority has done since we have a basketball court on our property, they've created this thing called the Junior Knicks, where they um, um, pretty much group children from each of developments to be part of a, of a circle of a so-called in-house tournament. And so the tournament has con concluded, but because things are still in a ride due to COVID, um, the gentleman that was running the Marble Hill section of, um, of this tournament or of, of this thing for the Junior Knicks, um, he didn't have the opportunity to, 
um, uh, to formally distribute like the awards um, to these children that participated. So to assist him working along with MMCC, that's um, Mishula Montefiore Community Center. Um, what we're gonna do, we're gonna open up the doors on November 12th at 7 p.m. to um, present awards to these children that participated in this program. Um, that's about all I can add for. Oh yeah, one other thing. Um, next month, I'm working on a, our first face-to-face um, -face meeting with the residents. So that's still in the works. So hopefully within the second, the second week, the third week will be difficult because that's Thanksgiving. But I know the residents are thirsty for a tenant association meeting. So I'm trying my best to present a face-to-face -face meeting with some of those residents who are willing to come out. And lastly, my election is coming up in December. <laughs> so vote for Tony Edwards. <laughs> yes, sir. You got my vote. You got my vote. Thank you, everybody. Well, thank you once again, man. We, we definitely appreciate um, all that you've done, like I said, and we just look forward uh, to another fruitful season, you know? And if, like I said, if you need my voice, you know, to get those votes, man, you definitely got it, you know, okay. because the people, people need to know what you were, were doing behind the scenes. So, and it's definitely appreciated. Um, and we just want to say thank you, um, not just as, um, not just as a housing committee, but as a community board in general, uh, because you brought a lot of things to the table uh, during our last season, so we appreciate that from you. Um, uh, I'm very much appreciative of your kind words. Thank you. Thank you, man. They're they're, they're very well deserved. You know, um, we also in, in moving forward, like I said, I don't want to keep you guys uh, too much longer, um, but we also um, I'll put this out in the air also um, while I have Miss Fry on the line as well as Mr. Edwards, um, if we can look at um, possibly using Marble Hill as a booster shot site. Um, because as you know, there, there is a push now for uh, the younger people to, to be uh, vaccinated. And there is a large amount of young people within Marble Hill. So if that's something that we can do possibly um, over a period of uh, a day or, or, or maybe two, you know, that would be a, a good thing. Um, so whatever you need from this, com this committee, um, to try and facilitate that, um, please, you know, consider it and, and let me know so we can try to make it happen um, because we're getting ready to enter into the, the cold months. And we know that um, cold, flu, COVID, they all run together, you know, and we, we want to try to get ahead of this um, as much as possible. Uh, I do believe that the young people, um, they're going to start doing these vaccinations um, within the next uh, couple of weeks, uh, with some time, some time along the lines of November. So we, we want to try to um, get as many young people uh, vaccinated as possible. Because uh, as you know, in, in our communities, uh, not just in Marble Hill, but in communities of color, you know, we are the most affected, um, but we are also the most underserved. So it's, it's important that we get ahead of this um, and that we try to get the help uh, that residents need. Um, if there is, like I said, initial shots for the young people, if it be the booster shots uh, for those that are eligible, uh, we would like to try to get that done uh, within the next uh, month or two, if at all possible. So I'd like to put that, that feather in your cap for you to think about. Understood. Well, let me just add that I've already an, an, an initialized writing to uh, some of the elected officials. The one elected official that actually um, 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 tried to even push this initiative was um, Manhattan Borough President Gail Brewer. She wrote to mm -hmm. the mayor's office to uh, consider Marble, make Marble Hill be considered as a pop-up site for, at least for the booster shot. But you know, what you're talking about is beyond booster. We're talking about for children that's getting the initial shot. And yeah. so I have no problem writing to her again, writing to the congressman that serves this area or the other assembly members or council members that serve this area, you know, for their support, as well as the support of the community board, which um, I will admit, um, Ms. Um, Sierra, she, um, I wrote to her and she said she's willing to support me on this initiative as well. 
So as much help as I could get in my writing to the electors, because um, I think alone, our intentions are good, but we can't do it alone. We need uh, the horsepower of our elected officials to try to get this done. And so I'm willing to write to them once again uh, for this initiative. Thank you. Uh, we definitely appreciate that. And hopefully uh, we can hear something from that soon. I will also um, speak with Sierra, Ms. Gannon, uh, in regards to that initiative and see exactly what, what can be done. Um, if, I, if I need to draft a, a letter of proposal um, for this to add to yours, um, we'll do that, you know, to see if we can, like I said, get this done, hopefully um, sometime by the holidays, you know, to make sure, to make sure that, um, you know, that we're protected, you know, yep. because e even though it's not what it was, COVID is still alive and well, you know, we, we still have about a thousand people a day dying in this country from COVID. And now they're talking about uh, a new Delta variant or a new variant of the Delta variant, you know? So this is just something uh, because there has been so much pushback against the vaccination. Now COVID has found another way to circumvent um, what has been done. And now we have a variant of the variant, you know? And we just need to make sure um, that through these these uh, next uh, coming months uh, that our people are protected, our young and our elderly, those that are infirm, those that have uh, immune issues, you know, those that have these, these other cognitive uh, problems, uh, that they be protected by getting a booster shot and that our young people um, with their initial shot um, be protected as well. So Thanks. thank you once again, and we'll definitely be talking with that. Okay. So now what I like to do um, briefly, um, let me go back here real quick. Um, I do see here that we have uh, Ms. Lee Chong with us. Um, Ms. Chong, if you want, I'd like to just afford you about two minutes. Um, if you wanted to just share anything, or if you had any concerns, uh, we've already discussed um, the, the hit and run issue uh, near two, 262nd, uh, but if there's anything else you'd like to, to quickly address, um, I'd just like to hear from you, uh, and just, if not, we'll, we'll move on. I just wanted to um, introduce myself to, to everybody present. Julie, I think, is the only one that knows me. I was mm -hmm. an active member, a community member in 2017, helped put the housing guide together. I'm a retiree living in a co-op in Spite and Dival. I'm currently a board member of Tenants PAC, which is a political action committee that seeks to get uh, politicians on the city and state level that support affordable housing. And I'm also a member of the Mitchell Lama United, which is a coalition of Mitchell Lama rentals and um, co-ops that are trying to sustain Mitchell Lamas and not get them privatized and bought out. Mm -hmm. And I'm, my background is affordable housing development and land use. I work for the Manhattan Borough President's Office and I work for HPD. And that's all I have to say. <laughs> and I like to see what agenda you have for the coming year in terms of the different forms of housing that are in Community Board 8, because there are actually three, I, in my opinion, both uh, rentals that are rent regulated and uh, co-ops and um, Mitchell Lamas, and, not Mitch, Mitchell Lamas, as well as NYCHA and Section 8 housing. Oh, the housing, yes. And we need to get you know, people who are in each of those areas to come and tell what they're gonna do for community board aid so they can sustain each one of these areas. Yes, definitely. You know, we, we are, like this is like, a, this is our initial meeting, but we will definitely be calling to the carpet, um, our elected officials, um, different ones um, that uh, have the- agencies the, as well, you know, like oh, yeah. NYCHA. <laughs> definitely, definitely. So, HPD. you know, we, we engage them. We engage them last season and it, we will not stop. Uh, we will continue to, to talk with these agencies to make sure that our that our grievances and that our membership is heard. Uh, so all the different agencies, uh, we will we will definitely continue our conversations with them um, and we will not stop. So we definitely we definitely want to um, thank you, you know, for those words. And uh, like I said, keep coming to our meetings 
and we, we can definitely use your voice and it will be appreciated appreciated thank you uh, so we thank okay. you once again i'm sorry this is julie can i just interject for one quick minute sure julie um lee was very modest <laughs> she <laughs> oh, want us to pick up rain because she worked she worked seriously on on the housing brochure she was very instrumental in putting that Together, you know. Don't worry, Lee. We won't kidnap you again. Thank you, thank <laughs> you. There were a lot of other people. You were there. I know, I know, but you, you worked very yeah, Paul hard. Always there. Well, there, you know, I, I am not Chair Lady Spalter, but I will always say there is plenty of room for you on the Housing Committee. And I'm Thank hoping you. with uh, Vanessa, when Vanessa Gibson gets in office, I would like to apply to be on the community board. Thank you. We'll definitely, definitely love to have you. Uh, we, we appreciate those um, with knowledge and, and resource. Um, like I said, none of us know, knows it all, you know, but together we can, we can make it happen. So we, we definitely appreciate you coming on with us tonight, um, sharing with us. And we, uh, we are pushing for Ms. Gibson. So hopefully, yes. well, yes. yes, we endorsed her, Ted and Specs endorsed her. <laughs> yes, so we're, we're just looking forward uh, to some great things uh, with this upcoming uh, community board season. So once again, we thank you uh, for sharing with us and look forward to hearing from you again. Thank you. Uh, let's see, uh, Alma, uh, I, I see that you're on here. Uh, Alma and Araceli, uh, would you guys like to share anything real quick before we before we go? Alma Araceli. Good evening. Yeah, good evening. So I'm Hello, Araceli. Araceli. I'm a resident. Hi. I'm a resident from Kingsbridge for a very long time, for more than 35 years. Um, but I'm also working in the community uh, for nonprofit literacy inc or link. I've worked with several partners, um, like Mr. Edwards, uh, Mr. Brown, um, also at KHC Community Center. I've worked with um, Ms. Mata, Kingsbridge Library. So we have several programs um, in the community. We're starting to come out and do read all outs for children and families. Um, we also have virtual workshops for families and read all outs. So we basically, enjoy reading to many children in the community and partnering up with different different partners to bring different resources to the families that we serve. And Alma works hand in hand with me. We also have literacy zones in the community, which are free books for children to pick up. Um, one across the street from the laundromat from the projects and the NYCHA buildings, which is the laundromat 230th. Um, which one else? Montefiore Clinic. United Pharmacy. So we have all these literacy zones where families can either donate or pick up free books. So I'm just very happy and I, I love coming to these meetings just to hear everything that's going on in the community. Thank you. Thank you, Araceli. We appreciate that. And we'll, we'll definitely spread the word. You know, I remember growing up as a kid, you always used to hear that reading is fundamental. And, and we live in such a digital age now that a lot of our young people don't even know what it means to really pick up a book. So it, it's important that uh, the word gets spread that literacy still matters, um, especially with the community board and with the housing board, uh, so that we want to make sure that they are aware that they can go and pick up these books or even donate books uh, for others to read. So we thank, yes. thank you once again uh, for yes. coming on to our meeting. Oh, thank you, definitely. One thing I forgot to mention, we also, um, have volunteers, very involved parents. We train them to become reading advocates in the community and they host their own reading programs. And we support with the uh, supplies, materials and books that they can give out the programs. Okay, definitely so. So yeah, we, we want to make sure that we, we partner along with you um, to make sure that we get that word out when we have our, our meetings uh, so that people can be aware of the services that you offer. But I think that once again, I, I think it's very important um, that we, we tackle literacy, because uh, that's the, the basis and the fundamental of life um, with the, the ability to read. So we once again, thank you um, for that. 
Um, I do see that um, another one of our members has joined the line because we're getting ready um, to, to come off of our, of our meeting, but I would not uh, dismiss this meeting uh, without hearing from Jill Towns. Uh, so I'd like for her to come on and, and address us briefly. Um, we've missed we miss Ms. Towns uh, and our other community board members. We haven't heard uh, from one another in a while, so we just want to make sure um, that, you know, we just have a, a quick moment to address one another and um, just to say hey. So, uh, Jill? Hi, everyone. Um, I've been very busy with uh, mostly my 90-year-old mother and um, just trying to address those needs. And um, I'm sorry I haven't been able to contribute more, but that's, that's what's going on with me, really not much else. Um, I realized that there was a meeting tonight and then I forgot, and then I realized that I wasn't on it, so here I am. So, but thank you for acknowledging me and I am willing to, at this point, participate in any way I can. Much, you know, we, we appreciate you and all, and all the work um, that you do uh, within, not just within the board, within the community uh, to make sure that things uh, are done and meted out in an equitable manner, uh, that there's justice uh, within our community. Um, we definitely appreciate that. Um, of course, you know, I, I know what it is uh, to take care of mom. So we appreciate that. Um, and we continue to pray your strength, you know, and, and your resource while you do that um, for your mom, uh, for your strength and for your comfort uh, during these times. Um, and we just want to say thank you again for all that you brought to the table last season um, during our community board meetings. And we definitely look forward um, to even more on this season. So we definitely want to say thank you once again uh, for being a part. And so thank I'm, you. I, I'm going to um, get ready to end our meeting. Um, at, at this point, um, there is no, no old business, no more new business to um, discuss. I think we've addressed um, a, pretty much, a pretty good cross-section of things uh, on tonight. Uh, so we want to just uh, keep abreast of what's going on within our community. Um, and I would ask that all of our community members, um, like I said, this is not a me thing, but it's all about us um, together. We are a small uh, community board, but I believe we play a very large and pivotal part uh, in the life of community board eight. Um, so I would ask that you, uh, if you have any ideas or any issues you want to brought up in the meeting, anything you want to see on the agenda, please feel free uh, to contact me or to uh, contract uh, Charity Spalter, you know, just to, to get that on the table so we can address it because um, I'm, I'm going, I have my own challenges and I may not um, address certain things or I might miss something. Um, so that's why I'm so appreciative of you guys. Like I said, you really cleaned me up uh, last season, and I'm, I'm leaning on you guys once again um, to help me out. Um, so if there's any issues that you might feel that I, I've missed or that I need to address or that we need to discuss uh, in, in this forum, uh, please feel free to, to bring that to me so we can get them on the agenda uh, formally. Um, I can submit that to, to Pablo and get them on the agenda. Any ideas for meetings, any speakers you may want to, to hear or to have address us, uh, please feel free to let me know and we will try our best to make that happen. Um, so at this point, um, if there is no further business um, to be addressed, um, I'd like to make an emotion, a motion to adjourn. I'll second. Thank you, Ms. Della. We appreciate you and thank you all once again uh, for being a part of this, this meeting. Uh, Marie, Paula, Tony, Margaret, Julie, Jill, Araceli, Alma, uh, Ms. Chong, thank you all once again. 
and be on the lookout for our next meeting and be looking to even having more input uh, from each and every one of you uh, moving forward. So thank you once again and have a great night. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Got my fingertips.